Our new Sculpture Commission brings together arts and science through public art in this brand new campus parkland, the Green Heart, at the University of Birmingham. Art is a vital part of campus life and this exciting commission builds on a long history of us working with artists, artisans and architects. The Arts and Science Sculpture will be in excellent company amongst the University's outstanding art collection, which includes public sculptures by Barbara Hepworth, William Bloy and Eduardo Paolozzi. After an open call, we shortlisted to four artists who have developed sculpture proposals responding to the theme of arts and science in diverse ways, from the histories of scientific innovation at the University of Birmingham to biodiversity and climate change. Each artist has created a small-scale model of their sculpture, which will be explored and activated in an exhibition in the Rotunda Gallery. The models will be on display on this very spot where the winning proposal will be created and the public will have chance to vote for their favourite. Our curatorial and programming team have had the chance to visit the artists in their studios and see the works in progress. Arts and Science Festival is a celebration of research culture and collaboration at the University of Birmingham. From workshops to screenings to uh, exhibitions, concerts, uh, talks and lectures, walks and tours, um, lots of different events that explore arts and science and sometimes the intersection between the two. Normally Arts and Science Festival is a week long and it takes place around March time. This year we're doing things a bit differently. In June, the university will officially launch the Green Heart, which is a beautiful new parkland at the centre of the Edgbaston campus. In order to celebrate and showcase this new space, Arts and Science Festival will launch in June with the Green Heart and will run for an entire year, bringing artists, creative practitioners and academics and cultural partners all together for a really exciting programme that will respond to four seasonal themes. The Arts and Science Sculpture Commission is a huge part of the festival programme for this year. We've got plenty of sculpture related activities and events and we'll also have a, a programme of events that are going to be delivered by our four finalists. So I'm interested in um, in objects and how they can be translated. Um, so it's not always sculpture. Sometimes it's print. Sometimes it's two-dimensional works. Um, but I'm interested in how the status of an object um, can change when its physical appearance changes, when its materials change, and what ideas um, that can generate and what conversations that can generate. For this project, I'm responding directly to the collections um, of the university. Um, and I've been looking for objects that are particularly awkward or difficult to display and thinking about how they can be represented and uh, illuminated um, through this project. In particular I've been looking at pacemakers which there's a, a large collection at the university and thinking about how they might um, be used to communicate ideas about art and science. I'm interested in their appearance, the fact that they look um, like these sort of beautiful little abstract sculptures. Um, I'm also interested in what they do, the fact that they literally kind of restart the heart, they have a kind of um, a sort of energy to them. And I'm interested in how they might be used to communicate other ideas um, through presenting them in a public space. At the moment I think the sculpture will be a pretty straight facsimile of a pacemaker from the university's collections. I think I will transform it in terms of its scale, so I'll make it considerably larger. The university has a, one of the smallest pacemakers available, which is the size of about a 50 pence, 50 pence piece. Um, so I'm interested in scaling it up and simply representing it in a public space. I like the idea that a pacemaker is something that is you know, virtually invisible, it's concealed within the body, and then what happens when that object is represented in a public space um, it feels sort of exciting to me. I also like the idea that like sculpture, the pacemaker needs a body to sort of activate it and it is activated and it activates the body as well. And I think there's quite an interesting relationship there between what happens sort of scientifically and also what happens with, with artworks. The sculpture will probably be made out of metal and plastic and maybe resin. Um, 
I want it to be as faithful as possible to the original object. I hope the sculpture brings attention to the university's collections mm -hmm. and specifically to objects that are difficult to display or have a, a slightly sort of unusual status really. I think looking at this sculpture I, I hopefully um, the audience will sort of reconsider or, or consider their relationship to, to, to objects, to materials and to their body. I suppose think about the dynamics of the, the, the space as well, you know, the green heart, this new environment that's being created is, um, you know, full of trees, seats, people, buildings, and think about how they all speak to each other in space. <laughs>
you might get a, a kind of group working together to make a film or an animation. It's um, it's quite a social process, I think, that definitely ties into our interests and concerns. We're proposing to make a wooden tower structure. The outside of it will be uh, covered in imagery that we hope to generate working with uh, staff and students and wider members of the community um, around the university. And it'll be made in uh, layers, so there'll be different layers of relief that build up uh, the, the imagery around the outside. There'll also be a lot of, um, I guess, holes basically in the sculpture, a lot of gaps in the, the imagery, and uh, we're aiming to grow moss inside of that and have that spread out um, around the structure. We're hoping that, that that kind of, those levels of, of imagery, the, the surface that you see on the outside and then the kind of almost hidden world that you'll have inside that's growing and um, developing as throughout the course of the project will kind of draw people in to take a closer look as well as looking at the looking at it from the outside they'll be able to examine the inside and see the different types of moss that is hopefully growing in there yeah and hopefully there'll be just some, a kind of real fascination hopefully in, in in how the sort of the sculpture will weather and change throughout the months there'll be these nice surprises you might go away for a few weeks come back see it again uh, and hopefully you know particularly for people who are interacting with the campus a lot they'll be able to kind of see this kind of changing um, almost like weather station that's sort of indicative of the seasons and what's happening around it. We've had a, a long-standing concern with um, the relationship with nature and people and, and technology as well so the structure will be uh, in a way a technological artifacts it will be we'll be designing it through design software we'll be using um, probably laser cutting or water jet cutting mechanical or technological techniques to produce the the structure itself and we really like the idea of that being again taken back to to nature this um, growth of moss all over the the surface of that will be kind of returning the hard-edged um, technological side of things uh, and giving it a, a coating of nature I think for this project we were most inspired by the landscape that surrounds the site location and we as a kind of approach and a team we look at very site specific nature of a proposal and a concept. I think what really struck us about this project was the, the green heart itself and how it was emerging as a changing uh, landscape in itself. Taking inspiration from the line of the Witch in the Wardrobe, we're creating a cabinet to view the park through an actual sculptural device and actually interact with it in a new way um, with a rotating platform offering a number of really exciting curated views onto the park and providing a sort of an aspect of time in the sculpture. So as people visit it at the start of the year in the summer, say, um, it's going to look very different, that entire view, um, in a sort of winter environment. So it's really interesting like seeing the exact passage of time over the new parkland. We're really working with the estates management and also biology academics to get a sense of how the park will grow so that our structure can really emphasise and pick out key points within the landscape. We're creating a device for viewing the landscape that's there and really kind of celebrating the situation that, that people can kind of recognise they're surrounded by. So I think it's really uh, a spatial environment for observing and celebrating the, the sort of life that surrounds them. In working in architecture, we are kind of primarily interested in the behaviour of people and to really celebrate how people can enjoy their spatial environments. And ultimately our proposal and, and the nature of the site really celebrates people moving through the site and how they experience the site and the sculpture within it. We're also keen to engage with as wide a ranging audience as possible so we've created an accessible structure really to be embraced and enjoyed by all. Mm -hmm.